Peace. What's good, guys? Hope you guys are doing well. Rebellion last night was okay. It could have been better, but it was decent for what it was. And when I say decent, I just mean that it was just decent. Nothing major happened. We crowned three new champions in Taya Valkyrie, Ace Austin, and Josh Alexander. And um, I didn't think that we were going to have a new X Division champion. I really didn't. Uh, I had predicted that Trey McGill was going to retain, but that wasn't to be the case. And we all knew or should have known that Taya Valkyrie and Josh Alexander, they weren't losing. But it was a good close to three hour pay-per-view. So please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, comment down below. Let's go ahead and get started. We are going to go over the pre-show real quick. So that kicked off at 7.30. So the first match of the night was Eddie Edwards versus Chris Bay. And it seems like Tony Khan pulled Jonathan Gresham, which is a bunch of bullshit. Like, this is pathetic. It doesn't make any sense. Why pull Gresham? It, it just doesn't make any sense. It's, it's a bunch of bullshit. And this is the problem that I have with Tony Khan. All he cares about is, is him and himself. That's all he cares about. I mean, this is why last year a lot, a lot of people tuned out from Impact when Kenny Omega was champion. It just wasn't right. We didn't get to see the cross-promotion like we should have seen it from Impact and AEW. We didn't get to see your Eddie Edwards, your Christian, I mean, um, your Chris Bays, your... Josh Alexander's, your Mooses, your Ace Austins. We didn't, get to see, we didn't get to see those guys on Dynamite and Rampage. We never got to saw those types of guys. We never did. And I just think that's not right. It, it's not right. It's not fair. Um, but anyway, moving on. So that was a standard uh, impact match, especially. Eddie won via the... I guess, Brain Buster, Northern Light Suplex, I would say. And then we had our first title match of the night, that being the Influence versus the Inspiration. And the Influence they retained, which is fine, which was expected. Uh, it sucks that Kelly Buffa K is gone. I think he'll be fine. I don't know where he will land, but... He'll find work. I wouldn't be shocked if he goes to um, WWE. I wouldn't be shocked. He did a whole bunch of comedy stuff in Impact. And um, he probably might do the same in WWE. So let's start on, uh, let's go to the main card. So we kick things off hot with the triple threat match involving Jay White. Chris Sabin and Steve Macklin, who was uh, had his face painted like the fucking Punisher, which was badass. Um, in the end, Macklin wins via a crucifix roll up on Chris Sabin. The match was good. There were some crazy spots in here. Um, Macklin did a dive over the top rope. He missed it. He busted his ass. Um, you know, Chris Saban is Chris Saban. Jay White is Jay White. You know, he's that fucking dude. Um, Macklin wins. You guys know how much I despise roll-ups. That's a one out of five. Automatically one out of five. Had he won with, like, using Mayhem for All or something like that, then I would have been fine with it. It would have maybe have been a three out of five. But, no. I despise roll-ups. They're way too overdone in so many promotions. It's unreal. And I just fucking despise roll-ups. Uh, next, Taya Valkyrie versus Diana Perrazzo for the 
Triple A Reina Durena's championship. This was a very, very good match. Um, both ladies worked very well together. They gel perfectly together. Um, towards the end, Peraza was going for the Queen's Gambit. She couldn't get Valkyrie all the way up. So Valkyrie reverses it and she hits the road to Valhalla. One, two, three. And we have a new Triple A Reina, the Reina's champion in Taya Valkyrie. And we all knew that this was going to be the case. Um, Peraza is getting ready to get married uh, to Steve Macklin. So Steve Macklin is a is a lucky motherfucker. Uh, I get that after out of five. Then we had another triple threat match. The second triple threat match of the night. Ace Austin versus Mike Bailey versus Trey Miguel for the X Division Championship. This is a very good spot fest back and forth match. Crazy dives, crazy flips, moon salts everywhere. Tornado DDTs everywhere, your typical holy shit chance. Um, but in the end, Austin wins by hitting the fold on Trey Miguel. And I gave that a threat of five. So he's now a three time X Division champion that is Ace Austin. I'm proud of my boy Ace. I like Ace. He's super young. I think he's like 24, 25 years old. The guy is a star. The guy's a star. I wouldn't be shocked in due time if he uh, is going to be uh, in that main event scene up there with Josh Alexander. Next, we had a downer, a major downer. That being Jonah versus Ishii. Oh my God. I fucking despise Ishii. So boring. It, he's just he just sucks. Like for real. Like he's he's worse than Suzuki. And I'm just like, what the fuck? Like these are just mid card. These are just low, low mid uh, mid card guys in New Japan. Like that's all Suzuki and Ishii are used for. Like what the fuck? So Ishii wins via the Brain Buster. I gave that two out of five. I don't understand why in the fuck did they have Jonah lose? Jonah should have won because Jonah needs a lot of momentum. It, it just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't. Uh, next, we had the eight-team gauntlet elimination match for the Impact World Tag Team Championships. So out came first was the major players, and then W. Morrissey and Jordan Grace, they followed. So Grace and Morrissey, they get eliminated very quickly. Um, and then post, well, yeah, that post-match real quick, um, Morrissey powerbombed Chelsea Green through a table, which was fucking awesome. Um... And then the Good Brothers, they came out at number three. They quickly eliminated uh, the major players. Then out came Ziggy Dice and Johnny Swinger as number four. They got eliminated as well uh, with the Magic Killer. Then out came Rich Swan and Willie Mack. They were number uh, five. They got eliminated with another Magic Killer. But, I mean, this was more uh, a competitive match. Uh, involving the Good Brothers and Mac and Swan. And then we had uh, Matt Taven and Mike Bennett. They got rid of the Good Brothers. And then out came Heath and Rhino. They won. Um, I mean, they eliminated Taven and Bennett. And then it was Violent by Design versus... Heath and Rhino. So EY gets the win here via the power driver on Rhino. I gave that a threat of five. It sucks that the Briscoes couldn't have been there. Um, Impact right now, their tag division is in a horrible state. It's in a real, real horrible state right now. 
Um, they're about to lose the Good Brothers. Honor No More is basically all but done. Um, yeah. Impact has to do something in, in their tag division quickly. And then next, we had Rosemary versus Tasha Steeles for the Impact Knockouts Women's Championship. This is a very, very good match here. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, towards the end, uh, Savannah Evans tries to get gets involved. She uh, eats the green mist by Rosemary. Uh, then Rosemary hits a spear on Steeles, but she kicks out. And then um, Tasha Steeles is able to secure the victory with a Falcon Arrow Bomb for the three. And I gave that three to five. So I am proud of my girl Tasha Steeles. Finally, the main event, Josh Alexander versus Moose for the Impact World Championship. The only match on the card that had any story that was worthwhile. Six months worth of build, which was great. I'm glad that they had a one-on-one -on -one match. This match was fucking awesome. Josh Alexander is that dude. He reminds me of a mix of Kurt Angle, Ken Shamrock, and a little small mixture of Daniel Bryan. Like, the guy can fucking go. Alexander can go. And I can see why he is the face of Impact. Like, this dude has all the two tools to be the guy. Like, legitimately. He looks like a wrestler. He carries himself well. Great promo. Everything. He, he has it. He checks all boxes for what it means to be an actual wrestler. This match was great. Josh was able to land in 11 German suplexes. Brock Lesnar is probably happy as a motherfucker uh, seeing that. <laughs> Um, this was a very back and forth match, very physical at times. Uh, Moose was able to land in the go to hell. Alexander kicked out of that. Uh, but it took not one, but two C4 pile drivers to put Moose away. And then also Alexander, he locked in the uh, ankle lock a couple times earlier on in the match. But, uh, Josh wins via the C4 pile driver. And he's able to celebrate with his family, uh, his wife, his wife and kids. Uh, it was it was awesome seeing um, Jet in a singlet. That was really fucking cool. That that was awesome. That was awesome. Um, overall, this was a good show. Uh, it was, and I'm interested to see what they have planned for Slammiversary. That is going to be in June. I believe it's June 19th. So I don't know why so many promotions are doing their summer pay-per-views like a month earlier. Like the WWE, they're doing SummerSlam in um, in July when normally it's typically done in August. Impact doing anniversary in June when it's typically done in July. It just doesn't make any sense. It, it just doesn't. Um, overall, this was, this was good. This was a really, you know, good show. Um, there were no surprises, unfortunately. So, yeah, but congratulations to Josh Alexander, Taya Valkyrie, and Ace Austin. So, thank you, thank you guys for watching. Please hit the like button, comment down below, and subscribe for more videos. I'll catch you guys later. Peace. Turn it